In the previous lectures, we looked at the parasternal short axis view. And remember, there are multiple levels. We looked at the aortic valve level, the mitral valve level, and now we're going to look at the papillary muscle level. Okay, So we're becoming more apical, so more towards the apex of the heart. All right. And what we want to do here, let's just kind of review where, how do we get to the parasternal short axis view? Well, again, we have the patient in the left lateral decubitus position. We have the transducer position between at the left sternal edge between the third and fourth intercostal space. That's usually optimal. Okay. And then you want the marker. If you remember the parasternal long axis view, recall, this is the right shoulder of the patient. This is the left side of the patient. Okay, and what we had in the parasternal long axis view, we had the marker, the transducer marker, uh, directed towards the right shoulder. And in the parasternal short axis view, in this view, what we do is rotate it clockwise towards the patient's left shoulder, okay, around 2 o'clock. And what we're doing now is once we have it in that position, there are multiple levels we can look at, okay? So there's multiple levels that we have here where in which we can look at more of an apical view so down here more towards the apex or more of a basal view okay so the basal view may give us an aortic valve level okay the uh, more apical view would be more of the papillary level that we're looking at here okay and in between may be that mitral valve level so the three levels we've looked at okay now if we want to look at more of a basal view in that case we're going to move the transducer or tilted um, away from the patient's uh, right shoulder okay uh, in other words towards this way if we want to look at more of a papillary level okay we're going to move it away uh, or towards the patient's right shoulder okay to look at more of a uh, apical portion and that's what we're doing here now if we wanted just the mitral valve level we would keep it perpendicular to the patient's chest Okay, so in this case, we want more of an apical level, and in that case, we are going to tilt it towards the patient's right shoulder. Okay, so tilting the tail towards the patient's right shoulder in order to get this. Again, the depth can be between 12 and 16 centimeters, and you may then adjust it based on the patient. Okay, so what are we looking at here? Well, there are two main chambers, the right ventricle and the left ventricle, we want to assess, okay? So look at the different views here. This one is the labeled view. This is the unlabeled view of it. And then here you have the, this more cartoon version uh, that helps you to, to understand what we're looking at, okay? So seeing it in multiple different ways to hammer this home, okay? Now I want you to realize, just to orient yourself, this is where the transducer is okay and it's looking down this here is the marker okay so the transducer is here the marker transducer and the marker okay and for marker so the transducer is looking down and what we're seeing here is the right ventricle okay more towards the top this one here okay and you can see that the right ventricle would be here you're not fully getting the whole thing and then the other uh one you want to see is the left ventricle the other cavity here this one in the middle okay the left ventricle is right there so the chambers we're seeing are the right and left ventricle we can also assess the systolic and diastolic shape of the interventricular septum which is this portion here so notice that between the right ventricle and the left ventricle you have the ivs or interventricular septum and also notice we said we're at the papillary muscle level so we can see two papillary muscles we can see the anterolateral papillary muscle which is this one here okay labeled at this so this one here is the anterolateral and then we have the posterior medial papillary muscle there this other one so here you have the anterolateral papillary muscle okay and then here you have the posterior medial okay papillary muscle so hopefully that makes sense okay so again we can also visualize the different portions of the left ventricular wall okay and in this case we can see the inferior and the anterior wall so let's orient ourselves here okay so we have the left ventricle we mentioned which is this here and then we can see the anterior wall which would be this portion and we can also see the inferior wall which would be here okay so again i'll erase this here so it's 
you can see that. So the inferior wall is this portion here. And then the anterior wall is that there. Okay, so that's the anterior. This is of the left ventricle. Okay, so LV. And then we can also see somewhat of the anterior right ventricle wall, which is this one here. Okay, so anterior RV wall which is that portion. You can see the lateral sometimes, which would be here, not really so much in this image. And then you may see the inferior wall, okay, down here. Inferior RV wall. Okay, so I'll erase all this so you can kind of see this without any markings on it. So hopefully uh, that's starting to make sense. So the main ones I want you to focus on visualizing is that you have the RV, you have the interventricular septum, and you have the LV. Okay, and you have the papillary muscles here. Okay, so those are the main things. Remember, you can always assess for any additional pericardial uh, fluid by noticing the pericardium around the heart. If there's an additional fluid, you may see that. It appears dark, okay, almost black in the fluid, and that may be a pericardial effusion that you're seeing. Okay, so again, let's just review what we discussed. So you have the patient in the left lateral decubitus position. You are putting the transducer on the left sternal edge at the third and fourth intercostal space. And what you're doing is going from the parasternal long axis view, okay, and you're going to rotate the marker or the transducer 90 degrees counterclockwise towards the patient's left shoulder about two o'clock there, okay, and from there you're going to then tilt it towards the patient's right shoulder, okay? If you're already in the parasternal short axis view, remember that tilting away and towards uh, can give you different apical and basal views of the heart. You want to make sure you're seeing the papillary muscles that we saw, okay, down here. And you also want to note that you see the right ventricle, the left ventricle. You can assess the systolic and diastolic shape of the interventricular septum and assess for any fluid around the heart within that pericardial cavity. Okay. Also note that you can look for the thickening and motioning of the inferior and anterior left ventricular wall. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available. So again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md. Okay. So this is our website. And what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here, over here. So you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so, and that's more on YouTube. There's another 100, more than 100, about 200 videos that are available with the course. So those are separate videos, and this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter. Okay, so completely separate from what you're getting online for free. Okay, these are um, course material that comes with it. So notice that you have a book. Okay, and then you also have the pocket guide available. So you can choose which format. They are the same thing, both these uh, book and the pocket guide, uh, different formats. Uh, I really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go. Now with the book, you also get videos. So notice these are the videos, okay? And these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there, okay? We'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic. And it's used now among many institutions. So use, uh, check that out. Now, what it also includes are calipers. So yes, you get calipers with this course, okay? Um, I don't know anyone else that offers that, but you do get calipers. I think they're very helpful and they can, uh, you know, if you know how to use them correctly, uh, can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on, okay? And then you also get our pocket EKG reference, okay? This was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows. Uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there 
very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who is the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic, in editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the EKG course. You'll see examples of lectures, okay, why we developed this, okay. A lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs, having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and, you know, still struggling. So. Uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them, okay? You can read all those introductory books, but honestly, they are not uh, enough, okay? And you find yourself using other resources, which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even, it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right, have a great day.